Thank you. Hello, everyone. Daniel Perez, uh, PC Suit of Mechanical Engineering. Uh, working with Dr. Karkinen and Dr. Chalik on uh, additive manufacturing, uh, the analysis of anisotropy and uh, microstructures in uh, additive manufacturing materials. Just a quick overview, I'm just going to talk about FDM printing, the orientation dependent anisotropy, and the temperature dependent um, interface strength. And then I'm going to talk about DMLS uh, metal printing and composite printing microstructures. Just a really quick overview since we've all been told so many times today about what FDM is, but it's just where plastic is extruded and heated and melted and uh, deposited onto the build plate. It's cost efficient, it's accessible, we can go from design to prototype very quickly. We're focusing primarily on some of the limitations, the low strength since it's thermal plastic. And then parts are anisotropic because depending on how you print it, can change the properties whether in one direction or the other. That's one of the things that uh, we're looking into. And of course the extrusion temperature um, can impact the interface strength between the subsequent layers. So this is the study for the orientation dependent and isotropic analysis. So it's the same dogmas, uh, ASTM V638 standard. It's just one of them is upright and the other one is laying down. So we call it the transverse because the layer is going to be transverse to the tension when it's being pulled. And then this one just goes axial because it'll be in plane. And you're actually going to be pulling apart continuous lines of plastic. And then we're testing those to see the differences. So you can see the same amount of material, same uh, parameters. Everything is, the only thing that's been changed is the orientation. And you can see vastly different uh, failure morphologies. One, one of them is basically brittle fracture, for the most part with kind of little plastic yielding, while the other one has um, much more ductile and plastic fa failure. And you can see the actual strengths here. Com um, for the axial, compares a lot more closer to the bulk PLA. But the transverse is a lot uh, weaker just because you're fighting that interface properties where the interface doesn't quite bond quite perfectly. So we wanted to look at the interface a little bit closer especially when it relates to the temperature of the actual extrusion, since that definitely can play a role in how well the interface will bond. So the manufacturer recommendations is from 180 to 220 degrees Celsius. We just kind of took the range and then some, somewhere in between. And we printed just these samples uh, to see what the difference will be. And there's actually the SEM micrograph of the fracture surface after it's been uh, broken on the tensile machine. So you can actually see the different print lines and the, the kind of little gap between them. So Definitely something to, to improve. Here are the results from that, um, for the average strengths. So you can see, as we go up from 180 to 195 Celsius, we do get an improvement in strength. But then after that, we don't see any more improvement. We actually see um, less strength. And that is something a little bit unexpected, but then um, we wanted to look at a little bit more closely why that might be. So we decided to do some uh, microscopy. And these are the actual the layers at about 200 uh, times magnification. Can't really see a whole lot here, so we decided to go a little deeper. And these are all at the same magnification. All, so it looks like they're all different scales, but they're all the same. At 180, you can clearly see a poor bond between the two layers. So that's definitely a reason why it would be as strong. 195, definitely a lot better. It looks like a nice little weld right there. 220 it does look a lot like a much better bond where they kind of melted into each other. However, that was not stronger. And the surface roughness of these materials actually kind of gives it away. We believe it's thermal degradation of the polymers. The polymer chains are actually starting to degrade and, and break down because of such a high temperature. So there's a, there's a trade-off and there's an optimal point of, at which to, to print these materials. And for this material, it's somewhere around 195. Moving on to some DMLS, which you've seen also today. Um, we worked with Johnson Johnson on some of these. Uh, um, I won't go into too much detail about how it works because it's already been covered. But we're going to be looking into pr primarily um, the grain size and the grain distribution. And also, we're going to be, in, in the future, in a se separate project, we're going to be using this to print a CubeSat frame for a uh, different project. So as I said, we really want to know the difference between a, a printed part and a non-printed part as far as the grain morphology, the grain size, and whether or not the laser scanning has an impact on the actual grain size and, and if there's any kind of bias or alignment. And this is, this is the result. So this is just a typical non 3 printed stainless steel. As you'd expect, there's no kind of bias and it's just kind of random grains. But you can see in the printed steel, you, there is a bias. There's all these little lines and then these way, these also. That's actually from the scan lines. For this particular part, uh, the machine was set to a 67 degree offset. And that's just one of the manufacturer settings where it'll print the scan lines in, in one direction and then it'll just offset at 67 degrees and then it'll just keep going back and forth. So in the future, we're going to actually be controlling that to just one direction. And that's actually what these samples are. And we're going to be taking that to tensile test to see if there's any um, 
impact on the actual mechanical properties of these parts? And if so, how can we use that to better design the part, or at least better design the orientation of those scan lines when we, when we print out structural parts? And lastly, we have looked at some fiber reinforced polymer printing as well. That's the uh, Mark Forge printer. So it'll actually have a spool of, of some sort of fiber, or Kevlar, or carbon fiber toes. And it'll, in, it'll lay that along with nylon uh, substrate. And you can see these double samples here. So this would be Kevlar, 45 uh, degrees, plus or minus. Kevlar unidirectional, and then carbon fiber unidirectional. And this last one is just uh, nylon. So these are samples that we uh, tensile tested to see what kind of failure um, morphology there will be with if in the tractor surfaces. So here we see some limitations with the technology, something that we're, we're looking to improve. We see poor resin content with, with carbon fiber reinforced composites or any fiber reinforced composites. You want to see good flow of resin into the fibers. You see fiber pull out, so probably improving the interface between the fiber and the matrix bonding. And then here, just some uh, fracture of the, so you have carbon fiber toes here that have been broken, uh, ruptured. And then you have the Kevlar fibers. Kevlar fibers being polymer, they will definitely plastically perform a lot more. So that's uh, something that we're, we're looking into as well. Just to conclude, we looked at some FDM parts and it's highly dependent on the orientation as well as a variety of other factors of temperature and speed. And understanding how all these things affect the, mac the macro scale properties <coughs> is something that we can use to better design our parts and better print them. And then for DMLS parts, we're in the process of um, quantifying exactly how much these grain alignments can impact the mechanical properties. And then for the carbon fiber reinforced or the fiber reinforced prints, we're looking at the resin content and the interface debonding for these composites. Thank you.